always exciting when you have such a high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. This man has been a master of the submission in the UFC, and even though a lot of people know what's coming, more often than not, they're unable to stop. Because the knowledge, the knowledge of the jiu-jitsu game is truly something that it's hard to replicate when a guy is as good as he is. I mean, he will jump for a triangle. He will jump for an arm bar. And as you slam him to the ground, he starts to understand, OK, I'm right where I need you right now. This is when the game starts for him. If he doesn't secure that submission, he gets you where he needs you to be in order to start to really make you drown. It's like going in deep water and getting pulled down over and over again because every time you think, if I do this, it'll make it better, it just makes it work. And best of luck trying to find a training partner to simulate this guy in the gym. It can't happen, and it won't happen. Well, you can argue this is the most influential martial artist of all time, the great Bruce Lee, making his walk to the octagon here tonight, Jim. Everybody wants to be Bruce Lee. They say they want to be like Mike. If you're a fighter, you want it to be like Bruce Lee. You want it to be that fast. You want it to be that charismatic. You want it to have an ability to just freeze your opponents. Your speed, your movement, just the diversity in the attacks that you can give your opponents would just confuse people. I mean, I watched him beat a seven-foot Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to stay undefeated. Right. If you could do that, you could do anything. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times, Bruce Lee, in a nutshell. Just so wise. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a freestyle fighter. Make his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 169 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Corazani. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Los Angeles, California, Bruce the Dragon Lee. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Dan Bergliata. So Dan Bergliata shares the cage. Ready? All right, so here we go. The weight and the height gives way to the action right here on one side. Maybe the division's most well-rounded fighter taking on arguably the biggest submission threat in this division. Because he's such a great submission grappler, I believe that this is the most dangerous fight for him in the division. Wow. He needs to maintain his pace, stay away from this guy at all costs, and force him to stand up with him. Oh, nice land there with the punch. You see, he's taking advantage of what is an obvious edge in reach. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. Oh, and he connects with a punch there, DC. You gotta like what you're seeing thus far. I mean, the speed at which he throws is crazy. <laughs> keeps going back to that jab, keeps throwing that jab, but unable to land. Nice leg kick. Oh, nice jab there. He told us on Thursday he wanted to break this dude's nose. That is certainly a step in the right direction. Mission accomplished. You are battering that nose. Just over three minutes now to go in round one. Nice strike. Just misses with the jab there. There's no tell on that leg kick. Try to establish that jab. Lee gets hit with a kick. Oh, that right hand is on point. Oh, over the top. This fight's gonna be over this. What a great way of mixing up his attack. He didn't stay the course. He mixed it up. He went high when his opponent thought he was going low, and now he's got him hurt very badly. Oh. Nice punch, man. All right, so high amplitude double leg takes.
takedown there. Now we'll see what he can do with it to try to advance position on the ground. You knew that he was going to attack the double because he's such an explosive guy. He got in on the hips, finished the shot very quickly. Fantastic job. Lands a strike now from the bottom. Nice work there by Lee. Back to the feet now. Trying to establish that jab once again. Blocks that kick to the body. Looking to land the right hand, he misses. Look at how he turns his hip over when he throws that kick. Yeah, left hook found its target. Leg kick lands. Well, you see him land the jab there. He's got the reach advantage. You might as well use it. <laughs> Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Punch coming, it's blocked. How's he gonna follow this one? Wow. As effective a straight punch as we've seen all night. Huge straight punch lands, and he's got him hurt very bad. Oh, great head movement there. Slips his head off the center line, and defensively, that's exactly what you're looking for. It's almost like he can telegraph when the punch is coming. And when he sees it, he just makes a slight little movement, right or left. Get out of the way and avoid those shots. Oh, big punch land. Nice defense there. Huge block. Throws a big right hand, but doesn't find its home. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Well, he was a little bit lackluster in round one. You can't say the same here in this second round. He has really picked up the pace, an uptick in the aggression and the output, and starting to find his range here in the pocket. Lee gets caught with that punch. He'd be wise to get those hands up. Oh, blocks that kick to the body. Nicely done. So he lands a double jab there. He continues to work off of that weapon, and you felt like that was a big key for him coming in tonight. Very important for him to start popping that jab. He's doing it over and over again, and he's finally a ton of success. Doing a nice job elevating with those knees. Just out of range with that left hook. Offensive fight, nice job to block the shot there. Look at the angle of that nice body. Well, he has landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything. Oh, that is a huge shot right there, DC. You don't want to eat too many more of those. No, and he needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Final seconds here. Oh, the ground and pound is there. Entertaining scrap so far. All right, so there is the horn at times in that previous round. I didn't think we'd get here after that head kick nearly had him out of there. It was a good round leading up to that. But when you take a head kick like that, when your opponent gets your entire body into that kick, usually the night's over. Very tough to still be standing but he can't take many more like that. Final round, you ready? 
Third round underway. Well, most fighters can't keep up this type of aggression and pace, but you don't have to worry about this guy. He hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. Oh, knee strike right to the midsection there. Nice kick. Oh, beautiful counter with the punch there, and certainly making good use of what is an obvious edge in reach. Big Paul punch land. Now he gets back to range. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, so the taller fighter lands a flush knee. Whoa! Oh, he might be out. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. You don't know when that leg kick's coming. Three minutes now to go in this one. Good punch, Lance. Well, it's all pace and pressure down the stretch. He is really lighting him up now. Time to get the bonus checks ready. I mean, this fight is about done. He's got her double leg shot. Oh, massive slam. That'll change the complexion of this one. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. All right, half guard position for him here, and I can hear Dominic Cruz in the back of my head just screaming about underhooks somewhere. Yeah, so. he loved I mean, but he's right, right? He's so right in terms of if you're on your back in the half guard, one thing you can't be is flat on your back, you need to be up on an elbow, right. you need to be half on the side, and you need to control the far side underhook. It is a battle for underhook when you're fighting in the half guard position on the mat. He's got the longer reach, and two strike lands there, and somehow his opponent's chin held up. His opponent's chin held up, but you do not want to be on the receiving end of those types of strikes. Jab yeah, hurt him a little bit. All right, 20 seconds to go in the round. Big kick. Able to land with the left hand. DC didn't take him long to find his range here tonight, huh? His timing is on point. All right, so the fight goes the distance. We'll take a look back at the action, but should go his way given all he got done in the striking game. Yeah, he did a great job of landing at will, mixing up the target, doing everything that he's become known for in order to cruise to a very good decision. I know he didn't get the finish that he wanted so bad coming in here tonight, but he had a phenomenal performance, and he showed that he's one of the best fighters in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' score cards for a decision. The judges score the contest 29-28, 30-27, and 30-27. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Corsani.